Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be using this bark to make some art. Somehow, this birch tree bark has been sitting on my bedroom floor for months now, so I'm happy to finally be putting it to use. I got this from already dead trees, downed by a storm the day before. I found lots of beautiful bark pieces while on a trail with my mother. She helped me forge all of this and lug it back to the car while curiously asking me what on earth I was going to do with it. At the time, I had no clue. I just knew I needed it. Now I finally have an idea of what I want to do with it. So much potential in all these pieces, a surprising array of colors and textures. But before we can get to the good bit, we need to do some planning, so let's sketch some ideas. I know I'm making some sort of collage, I'm not entirely sure what to call this, but I'm going to be cutting up pieces of bark and forming them into a picture scene sort of thing. I also know I'm going to be doing a forest scene, maybe a squirrel gazing at the moon from a treetop, or a deer lurking in the trees. I want to incorporate some kind of creature into this forest, so it might just end up being a bit of all three of these ideas. There are some nice dark colors on the back side of the bark, so I'll be able to get a nice diverse range of colors. I wanted to challenge myself to come up with one more idea that wasn't a forest theme, and I made up this deer skull image that is quite cool, but my heart is already set on a forest. I'm going to be using this picture frame, except I don't need this piece. So what I need is the board, and that's what I'm going to be building everything off of. But first I need to remove this uh, flap piece, which was more of a struggle than I thought it was going to be. I at first just tried to pull it off, but then I realized that the metal went all the way through and flared on the other end, so I was essentially trying to rip through metal with my bare hands. But then I grabbed a tool and managed to bend those pieces and tear them through the holes. So let's begin. I first want to start cutting up some pieces to form the trees. What better to make with birch bark than birch trees? I'm looking for any bark pieces that have these small lines that I think will look good on a miniature scale of a tree. Once I have what I deem to be enough trees, I glue them down right where I like them. But some of the pieces are quite curved and warped, and I'm worried about them not drying flat, so I call in some reinforcements. Infectious Disease of the Dog and Cat, the American Sign Language Dictionary, and the Encyclopedia of Psychological Problems. That should hold them all down, but just to be sure, I'm also going to take a quick nap on top of them all. Once I wake up, the trees are all glued in place and we can begin making the sky. I'm using the dark brown of the flip side of the bark to make a nice scenic skyline, cutting them to fit perfectly in place between the trees. Then I'm jumping over to fill in the ground area. Using small pieces to clutter up the forest floor, I'm opting to rip the pieces rather than using my scissors so that they look more natural. Now let's hop back up to the sky, as I should probably glue that all in before I get too ahead of myself. I added some lighter bark to the skyline as well to lighten it up before it meets the ground, but I ended up not liking this idea. I'm not too worried about filling in all the gaps on the ground as I have a green plan to fix that. I have moss. I'm gonna fill in the floor with moss to make it green. But first, even more glue to make that ground permanent.
Alright, it's moss time. I'm always happy to break out this old bag of moss. I don't get the occasion often. I've dumped the whole bag onto my desk and I'm delighted to find that it has lots of little goodies inside that will be perfect for this project. Like a tiny log, lots of little sticks, and even a baby pine cone that will make perfect mini leaves. I started slowly building up more layers of moss, filling in the cracks and making it all look much more natural. Using a sprinkling technique that gives this moss dust a really cool effect of sticking up and looking like grass, and just good and natural. It's all very natural. <laughs> I use an X-Acto knife to add some markings to the trees, some of those classic birch tree eyes that was missing, and a few other secret details in there. Now let's add more statement pieces like the mini log that I sprinkled some fine moss dust onto as well. A few select pieces of moss for some shrubbery, and then ripping up a stick. And then ripping up and sticking on the mini pine cone leaves. This is where the entire vibe of this takes a turn. I'm making a black water wash to darken up everything. I mean everything. This is a night scene, so everything has to look the part. This is where I change those lighter pieces of sky too. I just want them all nice and dark. With the sky now an appropriate level of black, I paint a cute crescent moon on and lots of little stars. I found this small piece of light tan colored, almost fuzzy looking bark that will work perfectly for a deer. I've somehow lost all the clips of myself cutting out the deer, but yeah, here he is. I just need to glue on his little legs using a big clip to bind them together nice and dead. Now I'm going to glue him right onto the scene. I ripped up a couple of the ground chunks so he would lay down flatter. Then I whipped up some tiny, delicate, handcrafted mushrooms for this log. I sculpted them right onto the log, but this is oven-baked clay, so I had to take them off and throw them in the oven for a bit. Once they're nice and hard, I can paint them. But they're so damn tiny, I'm struggling to keep them in frame. Then I dropped them into the paint, and got real frustrated and stopped trying to film the painting process altogether. Once they're done, I glue them back on to their log home, which was surprisingly easy. They fit right on there, like a puzzle piece. <laughs> Next, I wanted to add some secrets and cool details with glow-in-the-dark paint, but it ended up being kind of useless as it doesn't show up on camera or barely in real life. I tried. My camera absolutely hates this. Let's give our little deer a face, and we should probably give him some ears too. This is how I made the rest of the body. I made this little stencil and used it as a guide to cut out all the pieces. Gluing the tiny ears in place was not easy, but using a couple small pieces of bark to prop them into place, I got them to stay right where I wanted. And I lost all the clips of making the antlers, so let's just cut to the beauty shots. I've never done anything like this before, and I had so much fun and I love what I've made. It's almost exactly how I pictured it in my head, which almost never happens, but when it does, it's just great. I 
I definitely want to do more art with the remaining bark I have left. Maybe not this kind of thing exactly, but as I said, there's a lot of potential in this bark. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!